movie fans. Welcome to another edition of Cable 8's number one movie program, Always on the Movie. This week, we saw the anticipated movie based on the novel, The Hunger Games, and our coming attractions folks look at a clever new film, Jesus, Henry Christ, and the dark remake of a classic fairy tale, Snow White and the Huntsman. That and more here on Always on the Movie. Welcome back to Always on the Movie. I'm Brenna McCadden. And I'm Anna Bliven. This week, Brenna and I checked out the film adaptation of The Hunger Games. In the future, North America has collapsed and replaced with the country of Panem, a totalitarian and oppressive society. An annual competition called The Hunger Games selects teenagers to fight to the death in a televised competition where only one will survive. Take a look at The Hunger Games. Primrose Everdeen. Ah! No, no, I volunteer as tribute. You're stronger than they are. There's 24 of us, Gail. Only one comes out. What did you say to your sister when you volunteered at the reaping? I told her that I would try to win for her. And try you will. I thought this movie was perfect. I knew the general storyline of the film, so I kind of knew what to expect, and it was every bit as great as I had hoped. The actors were perfect for the roles, and everything about the film was incredible. So let me just go ahead and start by saying that I haven't read any of the books, so I have no idea how it can compare to the movie. And quite honestly, as a big reader myself, the books are usually better. That being said though, I thought the movie was really entertaining, it kept my interest, and I enjoyed the science fiction and like doomful nature of it. Yeah, it was so intense. Like my palms were sweating, I bit off all my fingernails, but it was good. <laughs> Um, I didn't know this, but it's a series, and so the end leaves you begging to know what's next. And I have to admit, right when I got home, I started reading the books. It's honestly one of the most interesting stories I've ever heard, and I think its popularity is going to give the Twilight Saga a run for its money. I'd agree with that, but on the other hand, probably because it's rated PG-13, it lacked the violence I normally enjoy in an action movie. I mean, I get the whole let's not glorify violence thing, but there is such a thing as leaving too much to the imagination. It definitely made me want to read the books this summer, though. Now, over to Sarah and Brenna for upcoming attractions. Hello again, movie fans, and welcome to Coming Attractions. I'm Brenna Kelly. And I'm Sarah Moore. This week, we looked at the new incarnation of a fantasy and the story of a peculiar boy looking for his father. After Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland was a big hit, someone decided that dark fairy tales were the next big trend. So here it is, Snow White and the Huntsman. Is there no end to your power? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is fairest of them all? You are the fairest. But there is another destined to surpass you. What does she want from me? Consume her heart. And you shall rule forever. If I refuse... You have eyes, Huntsman, but you do not see. She is destined to end the darkness. I've seen what she sees. I can kill her. I will give this wretched world the queen it deserves. Lips red as blood, hair black as night. Bring me your heart, my dear, dear Snow White. Definitely an adult fairy tale. Snow White and the Huntsman is a dark take on the popular story starring Kristen Stewart and Charlize Theron. In this version, the Huntsman that is ordered to kill Snow White ends up becoming her protector and mentor in the fight against the evil queen. The adaptation looks spectacular, though I question the casting of Stewart as Snow White because, frankly, I don't think she's on the same level with the other actors. Theron, on the other hand, looks like she'll give a wonderfully chilling performance as the evil queen. With an all-star cast, stunning effects, and great compositions, Snow White and the Huntsman really looks like it will be the next hit at the box office. 
I think Charlize Theron was casted perfectly for her role and looks like she will play a fantastic queen. This movie gives off a sort of Lord of the Rings feeling with the seven dwarves and the battle scenes. I am very excited to go see this movie the weekend it comes out. Snow White and the Huntsman premieres June 1st. Next, let's take a look at the story of a young child searching for his father. Take a look at Jesus Henry Christ. Congratulations, it's a boy. Hello. Why are any of us here? What is the purpose of our being? There is no Easter Bunny, no Santa Claus. They're lies! Why are you here? You freak. I want to go to college. You have 30 minutes. Children your age don't go to college. I'm done. That's simply impossible. You are an amazing young man blessed with an amazing gift. Who's my father, Patricia? Who's my father? Egg meat sperm. Sperm, my mother. You? Me? Oh my god. I'm his mother. You're nothing but a test tube filled with sperm. It was a petri dish. What's wrong? Just imagining my daughter's reaction to the news. Ah! Am I the only one here who thinks this is like totally messed up? Audrey's right. This is an awkward situation. You think? Let's get one thing straight. I'm a freak, just like you. Yeah? I think being a freak's kind of cool. You can't change the past. But you can change the future. So, what are your plans? Tony Collette and Michael Sheen star in this quirky comedy, both actors that seem to be incredibly forgettable. The young boy genius story has been done before, so it will be interesting to see if this movie makes a difference at all next month at the limited theaters it is being released to. I will not be spending my money to see this movie. The young actors in this film look like they'll be wonderful, but my main concern is that the story will be all over the place in this telling. Jesus Henry Christ is based on a short film written and directed by Dennis Lee, who also wrote and directed the full-length version. Henry's a 10-year-old boy who was born via sperm donation, and he is incredibly smart. He decides to search for his father, much to the dismay of his feminist mother, played by Toni Collette. This movie looks good, but I'll probably wait to rent it. That's it for coming attractions. Now back to you, Anna and Brenna. Thanks, Brenna. This week, our DVD reviewers watched the new dark comedy, Young Adult, directed by Jason Reitman and written by Diablo Cody, the same team that brought us Juno. Over to you, Indy and Aaron. Hello, movie fans, and welcome to DVD Review. I'm Erin Tompkins. And I'm Indy Verkamer. Jason Reitman's fourth movie, Young Adult, is a comedy about an author who travels back to her hometown to try to win back her happily act... Uh, shoot. <laughs> Hey movie fans, and welcome to DVD Review. I'm Erin Tompkins. And I'm Indy Verkamer. Jason Reitman's fourth movie, Young Adult, is a comedy about an author who travels back to her hometown to try to win back her happily married ex-boyfriend. Take a look at Young Adult. What are you doing back in Mercury? Or you, you move back, or? Of course not. Gross. Up on the 11th floor, and I'm watching the cruisers below. Psychotic prom queen, bitch. Down on the street. Here's the deal. Buddy Slade and I are meant to be together, and I'm here to get him back. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's married with a kid on the way. No, kid's here. I'm cool with it. I mean, I've got baggage, too. I would keep all of this to yourself. I would, I would find a therapist. <laughs> God, you are a piece of work. Can I help you find something? I'm going to a rock concert with an old flame. Let's show him what he's been missing. No, he's seen me recently. He knows. But his wife hasn't seen me in a while, so... I think the strongest part of this movie was the acting. Charlize Theron did an excellent job of playing a crazy, desperate young woman who's still stuck in high school, just like her books. I agree. At the same time, I thought the script was the weakest part. There were some scenes that just felt unnecessary or oddly placed, like when Theron goes with Patton Oswalt to her ex-boyfriend's house to spy on him. But then the scene cuts to her in a Macy's, and you're left feeling like there was more to it than that. Yeah, and for being a comedy, I felt like it could have been a whole lot funnier. 
there were never any lines that caused side-splitting laughter. I don't know. There were one or two for me, but yeah, most of the jokes were just chuckle-inducing. At the end, the last 10 minutes even started to feel like a drama, which was a bit jarring. I also had a problem with the ending. I felt like the final solution to all of Theron's problems was the same as what she'd been doing all along, just running from them. I can see where you're coming from, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that she's right back where she started. At the same time, you're left wondering if she did in fact learn anything, though. Overall, it wasn't a horrible movie, but it certainly wasn't comparable to Juno. That's what we thought. Now back to Anna and Brenna. Thanks, Indy and Aaron. This week, Alicia went to campus to see what you, the students, think the best heist movie is. Over to you, Alicia. Hey, everyone. My name is Alicia. I'm with AOTM. Do you ever find yourself rooting for the bad guy in heist films? I know I do, especially in my favorite 2003 hit, The Italian Job. This week, we're on campus to hear what students say is their favorite heist film. Uh, definitely has to be The Italian Job. I'd say The Pink Panther. What's your favorite heist film? I'm going to have to go with Ocean's Eleven. Set it off, for sure. What are your guys' favorite robbery films? Uh, Ocean's Thirteen. Definitely Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Heat. My favorite robbery film would have to be Catch That Kid. Uh, I would definitely be The Town. Now that we heard what the students have to say, let's go back to the studio with Bruce in Theater Throwdown. Good evening, movie fans. I'm Bruce Jones, and tonight we'll be debating the best heist or robbery movie. Now, these kind of films can go one of two ways. It could be action-packed and suspenseful, or it can come off corny and predictable. One of my favorite movies that's came out recently is Takers, directed by John Lausenhop. This movie kept me wondering what will happen next, and had several unexpected moments that made the movie entertaining to watch. So I wonder what the debaters have in mind. All right, it's time to meet our debaters. To my left, we have Soleil Claire, our floor director who has finally decided to show his face on camera for us. And to my right, we have Colby Nelson, an ex-athlete who enjoys a nice intramural game of basketball. So Soleil, you start. I think the best heist movie is Snatch with Brad Pitt and Jason Statham. Not only is this movie about stealing a priceless diamond, it also has boxing and a lot of comedy. Brad Pitt's Irish Gypsy accent is priceless because you can hardly tell what he's saying. The way the plot twists and turns around on itself, marvelous. The whole cast of characters is really well done too. It's a fun movie to watch and it's got a great title. Okay, Colby, it's your turn. The Town is by far the best movie, hands down. Well, not only is this movie nominated for an Academy Award, but Ben Affleck wrote, directed, and starred in this film. This film is an incredible supporting cast with Jeremy Runner, most famously known from The Hurt Locker, and actress Blake Lively from Gossip Girl. This movie has a unique storyline, characters that have great Boston accents, and an action-packed film until the end. This is clearly the best heist movie I've ever seen in my lifetime. All right, guys, you know what time it is. Theater Throwdown. My movie is by far the best because it's got comedy, multiple, multiple plots. It's got Boxing by Brad Pitt, I'll give you that. knocks people out. I'll give you that, but can your movie, uh, can it really tackle with, uh, with Fenway Park? I mean, this movie's filmed in one of the best baseball parks of all time. All right, all right, but Brad Pitt, he's got a great accent. You can't even understand what he's saying. It makes it all the better. Yeah, but for me, I'd rather uh, watch Hold people on. that I can under actually funny. understand. It's funny, okay, Jeremy Runner is a hilarious guy, and so is Ben Affleck and Blake, Li Blake Lively. Are you kidding me? Come on, she's smoking. How do you watch that? Yeah, but great acting throughout the movie. I don't know mind. about that. Babes, Boston accents, baseball parks, shooting. That sounds a lot better than some dude I can't understand and really don't care about. And he's from like England. What? <laughs> Jason cares? Statham, he's always great in all his movies. I'll give you that. He's a very good actor. But I mean, with the combination of Blake Lively, Jake, Jeremy Runner, and Ben Affleck, you can't go wrong. The town is the mm, best. All right, no. fellas. I think I've heard enough. So for tonight's debate, I'm going to have to go with Kobe. She had me with the hot girl. I mean, I might be a little bit biased, but hey, just whatever. Back to you, Hannah and Brenna. Well, there you have it. And that wraps up another edition of Table 8's number one movie program, Always on the Movie. Be sure to like us on Facebook and check out our YouTube channel where you can watch all our episodes. See you next time, movie fans.